What up, what up, everybody? Pastor G is in the house and excited to be here. I am very excited about being here today. I'm excited uh, about being alive. I'm excited about uh, being blessed of God. I'm, I'm excited. Really, I am. I'm just excited uh, that uh, he woke me up this morning. He woke me up this morning. That's within itself, it, me getting up today within itself is one of the greatest blessings ever. One of the greatest blessings ever. I'm just thankful today. I'm just thankful. I'm thankful. I'm thankful. I'm thankful for being able, uh, again, to sit here in this seat, not in uh, the physical seat, but uh, the seat that I get a chance to sit before such incredible people such as yourself uh, to remind you again and again and again and again of how uh, wonderfully you were made, how specific God was when he created you, how uh, great the plan of God has for your life, how, how, how if you can just uh, maintain your faith through the trying seasons, uh, God is going to pull you through. He's going to uh, bless you. It's God's desire for you to be blessed more than you desire to be blessed. Sometimes it's difficult to even wrap our minds around that God desires for us to be blessed more than we desire to be blessed. We can't, we can't desire to be blessed on the level that God desires to bless us. And so with that in mind, we we forge forward. We, we move forward uh, uh, with confidence. We're confident that if I stick to it, if I, I, I be persistent, uh, I will see, I will live at the level of God. And man, I am so excited. I am so excited about that. And you should be too. I am grateful today, this Monday, this is August, 27th august this month of champions i'm glad about it i was born in august as this is my month of birth and i, I know champions are here because i'm one and i hope you feel the same way now do me a favor before i jump into this uh, uplift this is truly an uplift today we're still talking about the journey and 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 your journey and i'm paralleling paralleling the story of jacob's wrestle and and as we wrestle to in, in this life to get our footing and to get full understanding of what God is calling us to uh, be. Man, once we grasp it, we, we're going to skyrocket into destiny. Destiny belongs to you. It's yours to have. And so I want you to share this. Go share this with as many people. Invite your friends in the house. Invite them in, invite them in, invite them in. Tell them to come in today. I know that they're going to be blessed if they come in the house today. While you're at it, I want to remind you that I do have a YouTube page. It's Pastor G at network of believers pastor g at network of believers go and subscribe to my youtube page you're going to get two years of uplift you're going to get two years of inspiration at your disposal where you can go anytime and you can share it with your friends as well that you know are going through some things in life because life is for the living and you will live you will live you will live you will live uh, you're going to get through this. What you're going through right now, you will in fact get through it. Uh, it don't look like it sometimes. You might have cosigners that say you are is destined, it's your end, your end is near, but you don't have to listen. The only thing you need to listen to is what God has said about you. And he says you are more than a conqueror. So get ready to pull yourself back together again. Get it back together. You're going to try it one more time. Let's do it one more time. Thank you so much, you guys, Paris. Thank you so much, Pastor Jesus Jones. Of course, my wife is in the house. Brenda Junebug, uh, 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 Morgan Fairchild, Kenya Watkins. Thank you guys so much. Adrian, thank you so much. Sean, thank you so much. Healing to you. Thank you so much. Tambrero White, thank you so much. Now, if you have shared this with your friends, I am going to get started. Your life is a journey. It is a, is a, it is a journey. You've been on a journey. And it's called your life. And it's, 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 we interpret it as beautiful sometimes. And then other times we interpret it as treacherous and, and tragic and uh, other times. But it's all the journey called life. But here's what I must start in life understanding. Here's what I got to understand that in life, that there's an author and a finisher to my faith. There's an author. There's one that wrote my story and he can finish my story if i can walk in faith if i can walk 
in faith. Jesus says it like this, according to your faith, be it unto you. This is why it's important that I walk in faith uh, in this journey called life, because there are several days you're going to get up when it does not look like what you envision for your life. That's why we are faith people. We are faith walkers. Now, this is this applies to everyone. There's been doctrines and suggestions and teachings that faith and God is only privy to certain people. But we know throughout the life of Jesus, that's that's not true. As a matter of fact, he put emphasis on uh, uh, communing and talking and 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 having uh, relations, relationships with people that most people would deem um, outcast or people that uh, have had issues in their life and had trouble in their life. And he always gravitated to those people. Why? Because he knew that what he possessed uh, could heal people. What he possessed, as a matter of fact, he was sent to heal. He was sent to men. He was sent to put people that are broken back together. He was sent to make sure that if someone has fallen and, and, and they, they've heard that it's over for them, that's the place that he specialized in. Those are the places that he said. He says it like this. He says, he that is old need not a physician, but the sick. In other words, what he possessed, he says, it probably won't work on perfect people. It works well on people that are going through things. It worked, it, 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 what he possessed worked well on people that had been broken by the systems of life, by the people in that system. And, and so he says to us today, if you are broken by what people have said about experiences, by things that you have gone through, uh, come to, uh, he says to you, come to me. I specialize. I'm, I'm, I'm waiting. I have a door open for people that are broken because remember, he is the author and the finisher of our faith. What does that mean? He knows from the beginning what he called you to be. And he knows what your end could be if you can walk through the middle in faith. In other words, even if you're cracked and everybody says you're unrepairable, he says, I know the beginning and I know the end. And if you walk in faith, I can put you back to be back together again, better than you was before you experienced the experience. And that's his plea to us today in our life called the journey. He wanna he wants us to come to him in faith, cracked, broken, beat up, torn down, talked about, lied on, you know, all of the all of the saying, everything that you felt. He wants you there. He wants you back. That's the, to me, that's the greatest feeling in the world that my father in heaven wants me back. And, and he don't, he don't just want me because I'm broken. He doesn't, he does not just uh, see, he, he, he just have a, a passion for broken people. That's not it really. Really, he knows that you are broken because of your experience, but he sees something valuable. He wants you because you're valuable. You're broken, but you're still valuable. You beat up, but you're still very valuable. You, 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 if a diamond has lost its casing, the thing that held it together, do you not think that the jeweler that sees the diamond that has lost its casing and say, oh, it don't have the, the casing that holds it up. It's no longer valuable. No, <laughs> forget the casing. The diamond is valuable. I can make another case. That's what God says to you. Just because you lost some things that have held you up does not mean that you're not valuable. He says, you are still who you are. You are still going to do what I promise you you're going to do if you can pull it back together. And that's why the journey is so tough. That's why the struggle is so difficult because you're a diamond in, in the rough. Man, I always think of this analogy, man, of a pearl, a priceless, a priceless pearl you are. A priceless pearl you are. Thank you, uh, uh, Sylvester Esau. Blessings to you, man. Blessings in your business. Thank you, Renee. Thank you, Mom. Thank you, Katrina. Now, watch this. A priceless pearl. Uh, how do? Uh, how is a pearl formed? It's amazing when you, and interesting when you understand what happens to a pearl. A pearl is uh, a piece of sand getting under the the layer of a uh, uh, what is it called? A lobster. I think that's what it is. Uh, 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 yes, a lobster. And it becomes a tyrant. It becomes an irritant to it. And so what it does, it, it, it forms this secretion around the rough, the rough particle, a, a, a small 
grain of sand gets under skin. And since it does not have arms or the ability to move what is an irritant, it forms a, 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 a shell around it. And it constantly it forms a shell. And it constantly, over and over again, until the irritant become a smooth, it takes off all the rough edges, as a matter of fact. And then this is how a pearl is formed, the priceless pearl, is because there's an irritant got under the skin of a, a, a lobster. I believe it's a lobster. I might be incorrect there. But this is the method of building a, or, or creating a pearl. And it's interesting that this 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 pearl started out started out as an irritant to something and and perhaps some of you have have been called an irritant by people and here's what god does to you he takes this rough edge person this irritant and he forms grace around it and he constantly over your journey you've discovered that he keeps forming grace around he keeps forming grace around he keeps forming grace around until you after going through so many things and after falling and feeling the grace of god again and again and again he says now you're priceless your prices. Everybody that can't recognize you before, let me finish with you. And, and, and you, just like me, we're still works in progress, but our end results is what count. What is going on right now is continuing to be a major work in progress. And I'm excited about that because I know my Father in Heaven loves me when everybody else can't even understand me. He loves me when everybody else can understand me. So I'm completely a work in progress and I will continue to be that because that's who God made me. And the Bible says we are His workmanship created unto good works. And meaning, let Him finish with you. Don't, don't judge anything before the time. Don't, don't judge your right now. Because there's something to come that, that is going to be much better than right now. So don't, don't judge it now because you still got some rough ends, still got some rough edges. There's still some construction. People are watching you because you got the scalpel around you. When a scalpel is around something, that means that there's a repair that is happening. Uh, it's interesting. Whenever you see scalpels around a bit, somebody has deemed it worthy of repair. Just because you got scalpel around you, people might uh, look at you as worthless, but there's someone that sees you. And your father in heaven, he sees you. So he's got a scalpel around you right now because he says, I'm rebuilding what perhaps have been knocked down by the cares and by the trials of life. Don't you ever doubt your moment. Don't you ever give up on who you are. Don't you ever let people talk you out of your, uh, 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 of your greatness. Don't ever, don't dare. Now, now that I got that out of the way, let's get into this journey. Uh, sometimes when we listen to or hear what God has said, we got to be in the right mind frame. We got to be in uh, the right frame of mind because if we're not, we will reject what God is saying because it's so incredible that he speaks it in our moments of, uh, of our feeling like we're not at our best. Thank you, Apostle Constance uh, Fields. Thank you so much for being in the house. Now, this is what we got to get. When I hear God, he sends a word. He sends me future. He sends me what I look like in my right now. But he's telling me about my not yet. And so don't reject this. You got to understand what he's doing. He's trying to inject some life into you because he's telling you in the state that you're in, when it does look right, that there is future. There's something to come. And you're going to have to build your hope on things. I've been teaching at, uh, uh, at my church that this next move or this next start, you're starting at nothing. And sometimes that don't, don't sound good in our secular application or mindset. It does, it does not make sense in the secular mindset. But there's something that you sense that don't make sense. And so you're starting again with nothing. Because faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. In other words, I don't have nothing that I see physically, but I'm going to start. Because if I can honor the Lord with my substance, I know I can honor him with the first fruit of my increase, as Proverbs 3 says. Now, honoring the Lord with your substance, again, your substance, what as, as, as according to Hebrews 11, 1, faith is your substance. In other words, I'm going to honor him with what I got. I might not have anything material, but right now, the only thing I got is my faith. And I'm under the Lord with my faith. I'm going to base everything that I do off what he said about me. I got to have faith for that because I don't see it. I don't, I, I, I can't, I cannot tell you how, I cannot tell you when, but I tell I can tell you that he will.
That's all. Sometimes the only testimony is I know he will because he said that he would. And I'm basing my whole life on what he said about me. And then the times that are tough, I don't see it. I honor him with my faith. And he promised me that if I honor him with my substance, which is my faith, that according to Hebrews 11, 1, he'll give me the first fruit of an increase. He's going to increase me when my faith can validate what he said. That's what he wants me to have is the faith. Now, let's get into this. Let's get into this journey, 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 journey. Uh, Jacob's wrestle. Oh, this is very powerful. I'm going to read something today. I'm going to start reading, and I'm going to emphasize something again. This is, I want you to see this. I want you to see your life here. The Bible is written for our admonition and for our example. So something written here is giving us keys to our life. We can learn something from Scripture. It is the script that paints the picture. That's why they call it Scripture, the script that paints the picture. And anytime I want a vivid picture of what God is and what he's doing, I go to the Scripture because I need to see the picture. Yes. So I'm going to read. Uh, Genesis 32 today. I'm reading from Genesis 32 today, and I'm going to quote some other passages, but this is what I want to emphasize today. You are in journey to greatness right now, right now. I want to highlight because I want you to know that there's some things that you experience doing this journey. Some of you are right in the middle of it. Some of you just came out of it. And I want you to recognize that even though the difficulties and the pain and the emotions might be still there from the breakup, from the fallout, from the teardown, and from whatever it was that you went through, I want you to see God in the situation because all things work together for good. Yes, for good. And I want you to see it, that it was working and is working and will continue to work for your good. Because God is God. Genesis 32. I'm going to start at verse 23. I want to start at verse 23. I want to emphasize something because I taught a message yesterday at my church. It's called the contenders. The contenders. The contenders. Thank you, Christy Jones. Thank you, Marlo. Thank you, Gloria. Thank you so much. The contenders. Uh, we, we have been taught that we were contenders for this life. Well, I'm here to announce to some of you, and some of you already know, that you're not contending. There's a TV show that's coming on called Contenders. It's about boxers that's trying to get uh, uh, their uh, build their way into, I guess, getting a... a uh, a, 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 a title bout with, but you are not a contender. Uh, uh, you, you never was a contender. Now, life make you think that you are a contender, but you're not. You cannot contend for what you already have, or you should not contend for what you have. You're not the uh, 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 next in line for uh, a miracle. You're the only one in your line for a miracle. We got to move out all this stuff. You're not a candidate for a blessing. Who are you running against when it comes to your blessing? Because you say what God has for you is for you. So I want to, uh, we are not contending for things because we're already blessed with the stuff. Thank you, Marshawn Lacuna. Thank you, Mom. We're already blessed with the stuff. And so uh, your next victory, watch this, your next victory in this journey will not come from your fight. It comes from your light. I'm saying it again, the next victory in this journey called life will not come from your fight. It will come from your light. In other words, it won't be you fighting like you used to fight. It comes from your information, your light, your knowledge, because your know will determine where you go. If you know, then you can go to them that know their God shall work strong and exploit. In other words, if I know God and the level of God and his blessings on my life, he's already favored me and favor ain't fair. So I can exploit areas that other people can't just because I know who I am, just because I know that I inherit what he's given me. This is, you got to understand this, no matter where you find yourself in life, it's not determined by you, it's determined by what he said about you. So he always finds us when we were yet in our dilemma, always. When I'm in my dilemma, he finds me and tells me or reminds me of what his word says about me, not what the people say, not even what I think about myself, because sometimes I cannot grasp because the battle is so difficult, who and what God said I am. So he says, never make a judgment from that. Just focus on what I said about you. When it does not look like it, you use your faith and your faith to come alive and it'll build you and position you in the place. Stay there, stay in faith. Let me read here. Here it is, uh, Genesis 32, starting at verse 23. Now here's Jacob. Uh, he's getting ready to meet his brother Esau again. This has been, this has been a, a, a wrestle. This has been a wrestle. This has been a tough 
a tough life. This has been a tough journey ever since he left home, 20 years of struggle when he left the house of his father who pronounced a blessing on him. Just because you've had a blessing pronounced on you does not mean that the struggle ain't real. As a matter of fact, sometimes the struggle intensifies because of who you were called to be. And we have heard so much uh, difficult and wrong uh, teaching about it. We, 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 we've been taught that when you struggle, it's because there is an, a, 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 an indictment from God on your life. But that's not true. It's not true, my brothers and sisters. That's just not true. I'm sorry they told you, but it's not true. The, the scripture says many are the afflictions of the righteous, the ones that are standing in the right place. But because of who you are and what you were called to do, there's an adversary that wants to distract you every moment and every chance he gets. And he needs no motivation. Why? Because he's a jealous adversary. Why? Because God put you in a position calling you son and giving you everything that he so desired and got kicked out for. And so he's a, a bona fide hater. So he's a bona fide person that continues uh, uh, to always uh, distract because what he cannot destroy, he distracts. And that's why he sets things in your way to distract you. He, he sends things that, that confuse you sometimes. I'm dealing with a sickness. And he says, God, wanna... God does not teach you through sickness. Uh, now, we go through things in life because we have an adversary. And at our level of no determines our place, places that we go. The, the more we K-N-O-W know, I cannot emphasize that more. The the it would determine the times that we take in. Oh no, for an answer, we are we are victim to things because we don't know that we can say no to it. We don't care in no w that we can say no to a thing, and so we let things come. We speak things out of our mouth, and now we become victim of the thing that we speak out of our mouth because we were taught that we should be uh, uh, subject to it. Like we we were taught that when we're sick, God is teaching us a lesson through our sickness. But then we defy God by taking medicine for the sickness. And it does it confusing even to uh, everybody because if God teaching you something through it, why are you trying to uh, 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 need, uh, uh, antidote, uh, uh, take medicine for it? It doesn't make sense. I'm sorry, but it's never been God's desire to teach me through a, 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 uh, a, a, a sickness. Come on. There, there's something that's called the, the spirit of God that knows the mind of God, that knows what, what is on God's mind. It is your teacher, as Jesus said. It is supposed to be the thing that teaches you all things, right? That's what Jesus said. So I, I, I'm going to believe him. But if I, don't, if I don't hear him, then I'm subjected to the theories of man. And that's what we've been subjected to. So now we allow things to happen. Uh, we, we, we have to go through, we have to be sick with stuff because our parents, our fathers, our generations have been through it. That is a hey, horrendous thought when you are a believer in the body of Christ. You're not subjected to anything anybody else go through unless you think like they think and, and you repeat the actions that they uh, repeat. This is just the way it is. And if you got something, uh, your revelation should be that my God is a healer, period. If he said it, that's what I stand on. Forget everything else. Forget it, who, whoever been through, no matter how close they are to me, I believe God. That's what he said. I believe that if he said it, I'm going to take his word over everyone else's word. Thank you, Apostle Bradford, for being in the house. Chantel, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Lee. Thank you so much. Jose, thank you. Now, now, watch this. Watch this. In this journey called life, there are some things that we uh, got to correct in our mind. I think it's got to be corrected or we're going to be subject to several things that we never should be, never should be uh, 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 ailing with. We should never be because of who we are in God. I don't care where you have found yourself. You are still God's possession. You're still a child of God. I know people will tell you that you're not. I, I know people will tell you that you stand outside because God is mad at you. Well, well, everything that they're mad at, God is not mad at. They're trying to put God in the position of man. And he says this, I think it's Numbers 23, 19. He says, I am not a man. I don't judge the way they judge. I don't see things the way they judge. As a matter of fact, my thoughts are higher than their thoughts. So if they're thinking it, my thoughts are higher. My, my thoughts are uh, completely away from them. 
so you can live in faith that God is going to do it for me when he does it for he doesn't do it for anybody else. But you've got to know who you are. And Jacob's wrestle and struggle his entire journey was because he never figured out who he was. And so when I don't know who I am, I let people put things on me. And, and, and you can be the blessed person, the, the great, the person that is deemed the blessed. Jacob left home blessed, but that does not mean that you don't go through things in this journey, trying to walk into the fullness of many of the afflictions of the righteous, not the evil, but the righteous. And, and, and as we are growing, each experience, we learn something through the experience. Life, life experience teaches us things about life. Hear me, life experiences teach us things about life. Uh, life and life is going to be lived as long as you're living life. There's going to be situations that come up. Never confuse it with your God position. Never confuse it with your God position. You are God's purchase possession. You are God's purchase until the day of redemption. That meant that you do not change. Nothing changes until you die. You're still his possession. Please hear that, my brother, sister. We got to get life again. Uh, well, it's it just, it's just, man, it, it messes me up when I see people that are hurting, people that are going through, and they have someone tell them, "Yep, this is because God is upset with you and He's destroying your life," and they believe it, and so now they, they, they have no hope because the one that I go to for the hope. I've just been told that he's the one that's out to get me. How can I cast all of my cares on somebody that I know that is out to get me? And that's the enemy's number one tactic is my people are destroyed because of their lack of information. They are destroyed. They are there. They are, they are going somewhere in the corner in obscurity and they're living life way under their privilege because someone someone told them that I was not interested in them. That's, that's the thing that grieves the spirit of God is when he has a child that is struggling and somebody is telling them that you're not good enough for God. You are not. You are. You are. You are. Ugh. You're just in it again. You're in it again, over and over again. How many times, like I got to deal with? How many times we 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 take it personal? Like you just a nuisance to me. Who are you to tell someone that is hurting that they're a nuisance? Let them get to their father, the one that can tell them everything. Let them get there. Let them get to their father. You can't help them. Send them to the one that can. And we are all going to be back. Let me read my story. Jacob struggles because he had a blessing on him. And life will be difficult because you have an adversary that don't like you. And it's not going to change. But you don't have to worry about him because you got the blessings of your father on your life. Here it is. Uh, Genesis chapter 32, verse 23. And he took them. Now, he's talking about he's about to meet his brother Esau again. I got to get I gotta get to this. He's about to meet his brother Esau again after running his whole entire life, escaping from the house because, uh, you know, he got the blessing of his brother. Uh, it seems like he stole it, but uh, uh, God really told him before he was born that your older brother's going to serve you. So before you, the people tell you that you're wrong, God had already told you that this is what you were going to have. That's been a struggle, but you're going to get over that because you're going to live blessed without apology. You're going to live your blessed life without apology. You Too long you have tried to apologize to people for something God gave you. You're going, you're going to make people happy and throw it up. God bless you. People didn't. God bless you. Watch this. Watch this. It says, so, and he took them. I want to emphasize something. And he took them because you're about to have another visitation. There's another visitation that coming. You got to have a visitation because you got to know your identity. You got to have a visitation with God. He's the only one that can tell you who you are. Everybody else can uh, take their best shot and they will judge or they'll, 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 they'll deem it who you are based off what you're going through. That's what your problem is. People send you struggle with something, go through something. So they call you that. Don't let them call you based off because you're not what you do. You're who God said you were. Yes, that's who you are. He's the author and finish of faith. And he took them and sent them over the brook and sent over all that he had. 
Now, here's is what I emphasized on yesterday when I was teaching on the contender. Uh, here's the separation. They, uh, uh, Joseph, uh, Jacob, before he uh, wrestles, uh, before he meets his brother, he had to have an encounter with God. You don't have to have an encounter with God to even deal with these people that you're having to deal with. He's the only one that's going to uh, fortify you to deal with this, the, the demands of life, in other words. And so his, the, the text says that he took his, now at this time, he's got uh, two wives and two, two maid servants. He's got kids by all four. And now they, they, they all mean something to him. And now he has great possession. God has blessed him. But he's still going through a battle in his mind. Because you can have great people in your life and you can have great possession. But if you have not, understood what God's purpose and who you were, you'll still wrestle. Yes, you'll you'll struggle like you don't have anything. And so here it is. He's prioritizing life. Here's one of the first things you're about to get, have happen. You're about to re reprioritize things that are in your life. You thought it was all about accumulating things. You thought it was all about uh, the people that you had in your circle, but you're still discovering there's a wrestle because wrestle you don't know who you are. Never base your identity off people and things. That's the worst thing you can do because people can get things, people can get uh, 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 p uh, possessions, but if you don't know who you are, it becomes your enemy. It, it becomes a, a a a work. You have to work to keep. Thank you, uh, Antonio girl. Thank you, John Johnson. Watch this now. It says, and he took them and sent them over the brook and sent over all he had. In other words, he says, I need to be alone. I'm going to take the people that mean the most to me and send them across, and I'm going to send all the possessions across. I'm going to reprioritize my life. I got to get rid of some things right now. I got I to gotta, I gotta get to where I reprioritize that people and things don't uh, make me any longer. Watch this. And the 24th verse said, and Jacob was left alone. And that's the that's the best, and I, I was about to say blessed, but it is the best. And blessed position is in this next season of your journey is to get some time alone, so that you can put some things back in place in your mind. You can reprioritize things in your mind because there's a lot of work trying to keep it all going. But you are about to reprioritize things. So the stuff that you have accumulated and the relationships, you say, hold on, let me find out who I am. And I don't need to uh, identify me based off my relationship with you or the things that I have accumulated. Only my father in heaven can identify me. And so he says, and Jacob was left alone. And watch this. This is very important that you hear this. And there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. And there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of day. Jacob was left alone, 24th verse of the twenty uh, of the 32nd. Please, I'm going to emphasize it. Uh, Jacob had put all his stuff out, had put all the people out. Now he's left alone because it's time to think, it's time to see, it's time to reprioritize. And when he was left alone, watch what it says. There wrestled a man with him. They wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. I've got to emphasize this. We have heard this story several times, and uh, we've read that our, our angel wrestled with him, but the Bible emphatically says, there wrestled a man with him. It did not say Jacob wrestled with a man as if he found a man to wrestle with. There was a man came to his territory to wrestle with him until the breaking of day. In other words, you will continue to wrestle until a breaking of a new day or the new day does not break until the wrestle ends. Watch this. The 25th verse says, and when he saw that he prevailed not against him, when who saw? When the man that wrestled with Jacob found out that he didn't prevail against Jacob, he touched the hollow of his thigh. And the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled, as he wrestled with him. 26th verse said, and he said, the man that wrestled with Jacob, and he said, let me go for the day break it. Let me go for the day break it. 
And he said, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. Stay with me and pay attention to this. The man is wrestling with Jacob. He could not prevail against Jacob. He tells Jacob, let me go because the day is breaking. 27 verse. And he said unto him, what is thy name? And he said, Jacob. The man says to Jacob, what is thy name? And he said, Jacob. 28 verse says, and he said, thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince hast thou power with God and with man and has prevail. Now, I need to unpack that because there wrestled a man with Jacob. This is, is very important. This is very important. This wrestle with this man is, again, the third wrestle of Jacob's life. In all of our lives, there are three ma major wrestles that we are going to go through. Three major wrestles that we are going to go through. Number one, the story says that he wrestles with his father-in-law, the authoritative figure in his life. Uh, uh, he wrestles with his father-in-law, number one. I'm not going to go through the whole story. Number two, he's wrestling or had to wrestle his whole entire life with what happened with his brother, Esau. You know, he's, he got the blessing of Esau. He's, as, as we've always been heard and been taught, that he stole the blessing from Esau. He stole the birthright. And now he's wrestling with, for the third time, this is the third wrestle, the third major wrestle in Jacob's life. They are wrestled a man with him, a man sent from God. I got to get this. Uh, I know there's, there's been teaching about the angel. He wrestled with the angel. But the Bible in FedEx said there's a man that wrestled. Our greatest wrestle is never with God. It's going to always be with men. This uh, third wrestle is, is, is the picture in Jacob's life, the wrestle that all of us go through. There are three major wrestles that we wrestle with. Number one, with leadership. Father, his father in law. Number two, with our peers. And number three, God comes into uh, a, a, a connection with us to tell us what our destiny is or give us identity so that we can walk into our destiny. This wrestle that he's experiencing in Genesis 32 is the last wrestle that he's supposed to wrestle with men. Because he's supposed to get clear who he is in God. Because remember, before he left home, his father pronounced the blessing on him. But he's been in struggle. This is, I got to emphasize this. Even though you have been blessed of God, that does not mean that you won't struggle with men your entire life. Because men are sent there. Uh, 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 everything that we get, in other words, in this earthly journey, the Bible says, if you give, it shall be given back to you. Good measure, uh, 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 pressed together, shaken down, shall men give unto your bo bosom. So our struggle on this earth is always with men. Don't get it twisted that you are struggling with God or you are trying to wrestle something uh, to convince God to bless you. No, the Bible says they wrestled a man with him. When we wrestle, uh, uh, God sends uh, people to wrestle us down because there's something that he's trying to remind us that we have that our struggle with men have uh, uh, perhaps convinced us that we don't deserve what God is trying. And so he sends ones to wrestle with us to tell us that, hey, look, you are all that you look, you're wrestling right now and you have the strength. But I don't need you to wrestle. Notice this, notice this. Uh, the man wrestled and he prevailed not against Jacob. It wasn't that Jacob didn't have strength to physically wrestle with him. It, it, it's that he didn't have the psychological strength to know that I don't have to wrestle with you. This has been our dilemma. It doesn't mean that you don't have the strength to wrestle or the, or the might to wrestle uh, uh, that will determine your win. It's your psychological place that you're in that will make you lose, even though physically you can handle psychologically. Sometimes we are defeated. Now, notice what he says to him. They're wrestling a man with him. In other words, you're not trying to wrestle God down for the blessing. He's wrestling you down to give you the blessing because what he said about you in his word, he intends to perform. And so he says, I got to give you because my word can't return unto me void. But you've been wrestling with people, so you judge me by what people said. So now you are, you can't come to me expecting me to do what I told you I was going to do because you've been wrestling with men. Here's the thing that I got to emphasize to you. Never let your wrestle with men not allow you to hear what God is saying doing the wrestle with the man. See, Jacob is wrestling with the man. 
but he's got to hear what God is saying through the through the experience. This is so powerful. We've got to get this. We've got to get this. He's wrestling with their wrestle, a man, not an angel, but a man with him. This is very powerful. Now you got to go back and read that again because you've got to lock this in because this is going to be very important. He could not, the man could not prevail. In other words, you have the strength physically to fight, but your fight or your victory does not come through your fight. Your victory will come through your light. It's the information that you got from God and what he's saying in your struggle that allows you to see the breaking of a brand new day. He says, let me go. Let me go because if you don't end this wrestle, you won't see your brand new day. If you don't end your wrestling with men, you can't walk into your brand. He says, there's a breaking of day. And now here God, he's wrestling with the man, and here comes the voice of God. He says, no longer will you be Jacob, the one that struggled in the womb, the one that struggled your entire life. Now you will be a prince with God. In other words, what you say out of your mouth, you'll see things moving. If you can come to the place of your recognition of your God self or what God has identified, somebody got it. Hear this somebody i know somebody need to hear this you've been wrestling three major wrestles in all our life first with our authority or home uh, our fathers it's time to lead secondly with our peers and then thirdly god wrestles us down to give us clarity after all of the wrestling that we've done in our life there's some people that are listening to me right now you are right here right now they're wrestled a man god has knocked on your door and you've been going through a sequence, uh, a series of events that sometimes is confusing. And God is coming and he's knocking on your door. And you might interpret it as a man because of the physical uh, physicality. But he's sending a man because he knows that that's where you've always been defeated at. But if you see it through the God lens, you won't, you'll be wrestling physically with man, but you'll be getting psychologically and spiritually what God is saying through the struggle. Then you'll discover that the man or the men that have come to wrestle with me cannot prevail against me because I am who God said. Don't miss the story. The angel or the man, the man that wrestled with Jacob prevailed not. In other words, once I get who I am, they can wrestle as much as they want with me. But my victory don't come through my fight physically. It comes through my light spiritually. It's for me to hear and to see again who God called me to be that ends the wrestles. So three major wrestles with authority, right? Number two with peers. And now God is wrestling you down. He said, now it's time for us to start this new journey this new journey. I'm giving you victory over everybody that you struggle with. I'm giving you victory over everything that you struggle with. If you can say and agree to what I said about you, life been tough, life been difficult, things you've been going through don't seem like a blessed person, but you are a blessed person. Now, let me say this to somebody, and I got to emphasize this because I feel this. Let me emphasize it to you. Watch this. You have been struggling. Jacob has been struggling 20 years now. Hearing before he left home that he was a blessed man, but he had to go through several struggles. And now he's finally allowing God to re-identify who he is. Listen to me. Here's what God is saying to you right now. Right here in the middle of this last struggle, you just got the memo that no longer are you called Jacob but you are called a prince with God. In other words, God has seen you in the midst of the struggle. God has seen you in the midst of the confusion. God has seen you when the times you didn't know. God has seen your heart when you tried, but it seems like uh, it didn't go the way I, I thought it was gonna go. Now everybody think I was trying. God sees it all. He sees it all. And now he's going to, have, you're about to have an encounter. You've got to have this encounter so he can tell you clearly that you are who I called you to be. Don't judge by that, Russell. Judge by what I said. Remember what I said to you when you left home and you've been on this journey these many years that now is the time that you're getting the unusual knock and it's unusual how things are playing out right now. But it's a God plan. He's, he's going to tell you again who you are because you've been basing. You've been saying what others have said. You've been acting according to their words. And now he says, no longer will you struggle and wrestle with that. You're going to be exactly who I call you to be. Now watch this, watch this, watch this. 
When you come from and just as you uh, come through what you've just come through, you are having an encounter with the one that identifies you. This reminds me of a story. Uh, if you read in uh, Genesis, the 14th chapter, around the 18th verse, uh, uh, Abraham, watch this, Abraham. Now, Jacob is the third in line. Abraham, Isaac, and now Jacob. Jacob is the third in line. He's got the blessing of God. He struggled, but did not negate the blessing. Watch this. Abraham goes into a struggle. I want you to see this. Goes into a struggle because Lot, his nephew, had been taken captive by five kings. And, and the text says in Genesis 14, you have to read that very beautiful story. Beautiful story. He goes and he retrieves Lot, uh, but he it, it's called the slaughter of the kings. Now, that's 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 a great part of the story, but here's what I want to emphasize in the whole story. Uh, 18th verse of Genesis 14, it says, when, uh, when, when Abraham returns, can I read it? Let me read it. Let me find it. Because I, I want to emphasize something here. Because some of you have been battling long and hard and tough. And you got some wounds from the battle. You got some wounds from the struggle. And God is about to heal you physically as well as psychologically from this rough uh, patch of years that you've been through. You've been through some tough things. And he says, I'm about to heal psychologically as well as physically. Receive that. And 14th uh, chapter, what I mean, 18th verse. Here it is. Here it is. It is. I'm reading the seven verse. It gives context to it. Context to it. It says, and the king of Sodom went out to meet him after his return from the slaughter of the kings that were with him in the valley of Shava, which is the king's dale. Watch this. The 18th verse is what I'm emphasizing. 18th verse says, and Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and he was the priest of the most high God. And he blessed him and said, blessed be Abraham of the most high God, possessor of heaven and earth. This is very powerful, Bless, possessor of heaven and earth. And he blessed the most high God, which had delivered thine enemies into thy hand and gave him tithes of all. Now watch this, I wanna emphasize that this reminds me, here's Jacob 20 years in a battle and now he's wrestling, a man wrestled with him and a man uh, gave him true identity. Here is what I wanna emphasize. After this long battle that you've been in, you are coming home after the struggle and you're about to meet. Now, Abraham met Melchizedek and it's interesting that it says Melchizedek priest, a uh, 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 king of Salem, king of peace. And watch this, peace, after the battle comes peace. Now he meets uh, Abraham, Melchizedek does, with the Bible says with uh, bread and wine. This is a picture of, 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 of after a great war, uh, uh, God meets you to replenish you. He gives you bread and wine. He says, bless, and then he re-identifies you. This is a season that you're about to go through, that you're about to meet. Now, here's what's interesting, Melchizedek, right? What the Bible says in Hebrews is this, that Jesus priest after, priesthood after the order of Melchizedek. That's very important to get that. After a battle of Abraham, he's met by a king that don't ask him for nothing. He gives him stuff to replenish him, to put him back together, to make sure he refreshes him after the battle. And now we have Jesus in our life that says to you, you've been through a battle. Let me meet you because I am priest after the order of Melchizedek. I'm about to refresh you. There's some things you lost in the battle. There's some things that you, 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 you gave up in the battle. There's some things that was taken from you in the battle. And I'm about to meet you to replenish you and give you what you lost. You've been struggling hard. You've been struggling with the difficulties. You've been going through some things. And I've always been here to make sure I put you back together after the struggle. Now watch this. Melchizedek says, bless thy God, Abraham, possessor of heaven and earth. I know you've been in the battle, and it might suggest that you are not because you had to fight, but bless thy God. Remember, he, he encountered the king of Sodom that said, if you give me the people, I give you the stuff. Let's make a deal. But when he meets uh, Melchizedek, king of Salem, he said, I don't need anything. The first thing you need to hear is who you are, even though you've been in a fight. Even though some things were taken away from you, I need to tell you first who you are. This is the way that you get over the struggles of the battle. So he replenished him. 
In Genesis 14, Abraham get replenished by Melchizedek with bread and wine first. You've been fighting. I got to refresh first. I got to come back and say, that's, that's the way God does things. When you've been in the struggle like you've been in, the first thing he does say, we don't even talk, talk about struggle right now. Let's talk about uh, putting you back together again. Let's talk about the things you lost, getting those back in place. Let's talk about all of the things that people done to you. Let's, let's make sure you are good again. Let's, let's, let's get you back on your feet, in other words, number one. And now, once you're back on your feet, now let me tell you who you are. Blessed art thou, possessor of everything God promised you. Blessed are there. See, if people that enter into your space right now can't recognize who you are, they do not deserve your presence. They do not deserve your presence. If they don't know who you are, I don't care what battle you have been in, if they can't see that what God said about you originally is his final decision on you, they probably don't deserve you. See, Abraham decided that he was going to tie after uh, Melchizedek discovered that I'm still blessed even though I've been through the battle. Don't judge me by what I've been going through. Judge me by what God said about me. And so Melchizedek comes in and says, you are already blessed. You haven't given anything to get it. God has already given it to you. Now, you gave it because the recognition of you being who you are. This is very important moving forward. You've been wrestling. You're about to be replenished by God. He's about to restore some things that you've lost. He's about to tell you again who you are to him. In spite of what you've gone through in this life and this journey called life, you've been wrestling. Yes, there always will be a wrestle. Three wrestles with men, authority, peers, and now God is saying, I'm going to tell you because you've been struggling long and you've been struggling hard. But there's great destiny that I planned for you, and I need you to get it together. You're about to have a visitation by the one that created you. And he's going to tell you again that you're a prince. I'm changing your name from the one that struggles to the one that gives instructions. Wow. I'm, I'm going to allow you to be in a position to give instructions because you're not speaking from what you've been through. You're speaking from what I created you to be. And that's a prince. You're going to get back in place again. I'm going to replenish you. I'm going to give you back what you have lost in the struggle. Somebody today is about to get back everything that they lost. You are, you are about to get double for everything that you've been through because you're going to hear God. This season, you're opening the door to hear what he's saying to you. Uh, again, it's going to take faith. It's going to take faith for you to walk out in spite of this. Now, I want to emphasize something here. This is Jacob's time to move. And, and the text says he, in fact, meets his brother again. And he, after sending gifts, after making concessions, because he didn't know who he was, he just listened to people. He sent concessions, he sent gifts, trying to appease somebody that God had already dealt with. This is why it's so important to get back in position with your father that identifies you so you won't pay the heavy price to something that you've already got dominion over. Yes, he's sending Esau, his brother, gifts to please him when God has already dealt with him. And you can't get that information that God has dealt with them until you get with God and let him tell you who you are again. This is so interesting, man. This, this story is so interesting. So after he meets his brother Esau, they embrace. Watch this. Watch this. I want to read something that is very powerful. When Esau meets uh, Jacob and they embrace one another, Jacob says something uh, uh, with him. They says something to him. Uh, man, let me read, let me find out what this is. Because Jacob tells Esau, when I looked into your eyes, I saw God. Okay, the, this is uh, uh, Genesis 33, 13. Let me read this, let me read this. This is important to you. This is important to you. This is important that you do not allow this wrestle to change things in your mind, the struggle to change things. Uh, Genesis uh, 33, 10, it says, and Jacob said, Nay, I pray thee, if now I have found grace in thy sight. He's talking to Esau's brother. If I found grace in thy sight, then receive my present at my hand. For therefore, I have seen thy face. Watch this. As though I have seen the face of God 
and thou was pleased with me. Now that's important that you understand that. He's talking to his brother Esau. I've seen thy face, and it's as though I've seen God, and God is pleased with me. Because now that I've seen you and I made peace, because God made peace between me and you, I'm discovering that I have seen the face of God and my struggle was never with God. It was only with you. And now that I'm over you, then I can step back in the place of God. This picture is a picture of you understanding that it was never a struggle with God. You've always struggled with me. God has never changed his position on you even though men have, even though you heard that, that they can change your position. They can tell you that you're not what, who, who God created you to be. But God never changed his position. So once you get over men, you're back in position with God because the struggle is never with God. He never changed his mind about you. Life thrown you many obstacles and many challenges that you might think it was God of doing this to you, but no, it was men. It was your struggle with men. Amen. My time is almost up, but I am very thankful today. I'm very thankful today. And I will, I'm going to continue this teaching because there's something else. This all happened because J Jacob was given the gift of birth. The text says, if you read Genesis 30, 25, it says, when Rachel gave birth to Jacob, to Joseph, Jacob goes to his father-in-law and says, it's time for me to leave. There's, there's a birthing that is a sign that it's time for you to move forward. You must move forward when God allows you. Now, what's the emphasis on this story with Rachel is Jacob had given birth to something with his first love. Remember, when he first got to Laban's house, Rachel was the first long lady that he saw and fell in love with, but he had to go through Leah and the hand servants all of these years before he actually was able to get, he unwrestled years before he actually gave birth with, to something with what he envisioned first. Here's what is important. This is the season that you're going to give birth to your original plan. You've been struggling, you had alternative plans, you had alternative things given to you, just like LeBan gave an alternative, gave Leah when it was Rachel. You have been given alternative ideas, you've been given alter uh, alternative thoughts, you've been given alternative to the original plan of God. And now for the first time, God is bringing you back to your original place. And he says, I'm gonna allow you to give birth to your first love. The very thing that got your attention in the first place is what I'm going to allow you to give birth to. Thank you for all the things, other things that you've done in the process. But now, since the struggle is over, I'm going to allow you to give birth to your first love. This is why it's so exciting. This is why so many of your spirits are jumping right now is because God promised you this. And now, for the first time, the struggle is over. He's going to allow you to walk in what he promised. He's going to get rid of the alternative ideas and the alternative births. And now you're going to give birth to something with your first love. And now you're going to have the energy because, because remember, Jacob, when he first saw Rachel and he was given what it, the requirements was to actually have her, uh, his father-in-law said, you're going to have to work seven years to get up. And Jacob said, that's nothing. Because now it's no labor for me. It's love for me because I see what I want. And now you're about to return to your first love. And so since it's your first love, is you're going to say like Jacob, now I can go there. I got the energy to go for this because that's not labor to me. That's love to me. This is what God showed me in the first place. This is what I wanted in the first place. You've been struggling hard and wrestling because you have went with the alternative ideas. You went with the great ideas of the people that had an ideal for you. You went with all the other stuff. But now you're about to get back to what you originally heard from God. And it's not going to be a struggle. It's not going to be hard. It's because what you've been, your heart and your passion have been burning for this for years. And God is going to give you an opportunity to do it again. You thought it was lost, but he's been wrestling with you. You thought it was gone. You thought it was over, but he's been wrestling with you. He's been wrestling this whole time. This is what the strange feeling is about. He's wrestling with me to tell me I'm a prince. He's reminding me of what he said to me before. 
He's he's knocking on my door to tell me again, it's you. Yeah, 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 it's you. Yeah, I have not forgotten about you. Men have forgotten about you. Men have struggled, but I have not forgotten about you. Amen. I'm excited. Now, let's pray together because we're going to seal this. This is this is the season for it. This is the season for it. So get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready for it to happen because you are about to get this thing. I'm excited about it. Father, thank you today. Thank you for this word. Thank you for allowing us to see again, to expect again, to walk in faith again, to let us give birth to our original idea, the love of our life. You're allowing us to give birth to it. You're giving us the energy again. The wrestle and the struggle is over. I know who I am. You have re-identified me. It's been difficult, but I'm walking through by faith. I'm coming alive again through faith. Lord, I thank you for just considering me after all I've been through. You still say that you love me. You see it. You're putting me back together again. And I thank you for being better than I ever was in my entire life. Thank you for restoring all that I lost through the struggle. Thank you for the restoration of my soul. Thank you so much. I give your name, praise, honor, and glory for that. In Jesus' name, amen. I uh, thank God today. I hope you heard this. I hope you'll go back and listen to it again and, and, and remind yourself over and over again, I am who God said I was, who God says that I am. I'm all of that. The best me have not even been experienced by me or people, but they will in the days ahead see the best me because I'm trusting God for the total me. I will not be denied in the season. I will not be denied this time. I'm going for it. You told me no the last time. I listened to what man said. Not this time. I'm listening to what God is saying. And I'm going to live the life that I've been promised by God. Who else should I believe? Whose report will you believe? Whose report will you believe? Will you believe the report of God on you that says you are? Or you believe a report of men that say, maybe. God says, I know who you are. I know who I made you to be. That's who you should go with. I'm just suggesting. Now, go to my YouTube page. This, you know, this, this video will be up within uh, the hour. Go there. Subscribe. If everybody that's listening to me today would, be, would go and subscribe, I would be so happy and elated that you went and subscribed to my face uh youtube page pastor g a network of believers i appreciate you for those of you that are in the little rock area i want you to come to bible study tomorrow night 11 11 west 7th street downtown little rock arkansas it is going to be i'm telling you i'm telling you i'm going to teach on this wrestle even deeper into uh the wrestle not against flesh and blood there's, there needs to be an understanding about that so that we can walk into this new life because that's going to be some other challenges that is going to challenge your no. It's going to, it's going to challenge your no. And you're going to have people that don't know tell you no. And you're going to have to know this information because your victory does not come through your fight, your, your, your physical fight, because you can prevail the physical but you can be defeated because you don't know in your mind who you are ask jacob he'll tell you i can i can i can stand the battle but i can i can end up uh physically winning but mentally being destroyed and so i want to teach on that tomorrow night i invite you out personally tomorrow night 11 11 west 7th street downtown little rock on 6 30 p.m you just come as you are we'll uh we'll give you dinner i i I'll supply dinner bring your children as well i have children church for them Thank you guys so much. This is a Monday, and you should be uh, uh, excited. Pastor Deidre Johns, I know tomorrow is your birthday. I'm not having lunchtime uplift tomorrow, but I want to uh, go ahead on and for those of you that Pastor Deidre, one of my sisters at church, say happy birthday to her. Uh, blessings on you, Pastor Deidre. Happy birthday. I'm not going to say her age. She'll say it if she want to. But happy birthday, Pastor Deidre John's happy, happy, happy. She's has been an incredible gift to network of believers and an incredible woman of God. Thank you so much, Pastor Deidre Johns. Thank you. All right, I am out of here. Please go back and listen to this. If you will listen to this, I'm guarantee you, God will bless you. This new season is going to be an incredible season. 
guest sitting with us. It's going to be an incredible season. Thank you. 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 Go to YouTube page, Pastor G at Network of Believers. Subscribe to the YouTube page. I am out of here. Thank you so much, uh, Pastor Stevie T. Robinson. Thank you, man. Uh, Pastor D. John Adrian. Thanks so much. Paris. Thank you. Sarah. Thank you. Marissa. Brother Dad. Thank you, guys. Mom. Thank you, Raina. Thank you guys so, 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 so much. Who else is in here? My computer don't let me go back up. Shirley Walker, thank you so much. Uh, Salento, what's up, Salento? Thank you so much. Uh, after Gibbon Johns, thank you. Uh, Miss May Smith, thank you so much. Who else is in here? All right, that's as far as it's going to let me go. I know there's others. Uh, for those of you that I don't see, thank you so much for being the house. I am out of here. Have a wonderful Monday. Have a wonderful morning. I might post a video. Uh, I'm gonna take off the uh, well, I'll never take off the pastor hat. I just switch it around and put the producer hat. And then Rodney Block and myself, we might post some live videos of the new uh, recording the record. Holla at you guys. See you guys later. Holla, Pastor G is out. I thought I was out, but I'm out this time. I'm gone. Holla. Bye bye.